What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders, the founders of Zapier, A Weber, RX Bar, which ended up selling to Kellogg for $600 million. Eugene, uh, check out that interview. P90X founder Tony Horton talks about how he made money as a street mine before he sold hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, Atari founder Nolan Bushnell talked about how, you know, he was Steve Jobs' mentor. And Steve offered Nolan 33% of Apple for $50,000 and why he said no to that and, and many more of uh, founders overcoming big challenges in life and business. Um, this episode is brought to you by Rise25. I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. And our mission is to connect you with your best referral partners or customers. We do it through a couple done-for-you services. One is an event solution for large conferences and software companies. Some of the actual SEM rush Staff came to one of our past ones at Retail X. It was good to have them there. Um, we have a done for you podcast solution, which, in my opinion, is the best thing I've done for my business and my life. It's helped me connect with best friends, with referral partners, clients, uh, you know, everyone, um, and a lead generation. But you know, our greater purpose, Eugene, is our mission is really because John realized that both of our grandfathers were an inspiration to myself and him, and my grandfather was a Holocaust survivor. He escaped Nazi Germany, and him and his brother were the only people to survive from their family, and John's grandfather at the same time was a B-17 captain and pilot who flew 35 missions over Nazi Germany. So we decided to put together a veteran entrepreneur scholarship, Um, and so if anyone goes to rise25.com slash mission, rise25.com slash mission, you can apply. If you're a veteran or you know a veteran, send it to them. We do, you know, all expense paid trip from all expense paid trip to one of our VIP events and conferences to just a comp ticket to the conference, whatever we can do. Um, so check that out. I'm excited to introduce today's guest. We have Eugene Levin. And if it's if you're a true Russian, you'd know how to pronounce his name, uh, Yevgeny. And uh, he was one of the first investors to spot SEM Rush. SEM Rush, if you don't know, they started in 2008. has over 4 million users using a variety of their SEO tools. And after Eugene joined the company as a chief strategy officer, he helped to quadruple the company. Um, and uh, and the revenue and raised over forty million dollars from tier one investors. Uh, Eugene started his career as a VC and was partnered Foresight Ventures and Target Global. Foresight Ventures was ranked among the top ten Russian VC firms by Forbes. And Eugene was in charge of the U.S. pipeline at Target Global. They invested in a number of notable companies that you've probably heard of: Blue Apron, which IPO'd, Lyft, and Juno, which got acquired. Um, SEM Rush also has a free product for Amazon sellers. Um, it's called Sellerly.com. You know, you better grab it now because I'm, I'm not sure how long it'll be free. I know Eugene says it'll always be free, but you know what? You know, anything that I think, you know, when companies charge, they can actually keep up with it and, and make it better. So we'll find out why it's free. But go to Sellerly.com and it basically helps split testing uh, for your Amazon listings which everyone wants because it's all about conversion. So, Eugene, thanks for joining me. Jeremy, really great to be here. And, uh, yeah, really appreciate the introduction. Couldn't say it better. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm excited to dig in. You know, I'm fascinated by your background. Um, and there's a couple things that we're going to dig into. And we will talk about Sellerly. But um, you grew up in Russia. So, On- right? Not exactly. I'm actually from Belarus. Belarus. So you grew up in Belarus. Tell me about what it was like growing up there and wow. what you wanted to do when you grew up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Listen, that's um, that's interesting. It was really tough. I mean, uh, unbelievably. When, when I tell stories about my childhood, people think that I make them up, but they're actually all, all true. Yeah, and, like uh, what? Like, you know, um, I'm, I'm relatively young, so 
when Soviet Union collapsed, I was five. So so I was old enough to understand the whole thing, but like not all and old enough to really kind of suffer from it mentally, like, you know. Right. Um, but in, in general, like a lot of poverty, uh, a lot of unemployment, um, like at one moment, the whole life of millions and millions of really uh, good people changed. Um, and it, you know, it hit, hit harder uh, people like doctors and teachers, even though they still had their their job, like salaries was, was so low, it was almost impossible to make decent living. So, so many people, for example, um, had to grow their food on their um, kind of kind of uh, country houses. So, so almost well, almost every family in in that part of the world had kind of some small house in in the countryside, and and a lo- and some land. So, so almost every household was farming. Not like you know, uh, you know, today people do do kind of farming. Uh, to kind of have organic food, really good food. So, so we had to do those things to just, you know, have survive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's like, um, I, I you know, I wouldn't say like you know we would we would starve if we if we didn't have it, but we would not have like uh, you know fresh vegetables, for example. So, um, so it was, it was complicated time, and uh, to the point, yeah, when when I was you know. Six and seven, I learned how to actually grow food, like you know, potatoes and tomatoes. And and today, it kind of sounds funny to me. And as I said, I was really young; I didn't understand the whole complexity of the situation. But today, if I was told that my kids have to work on the on on some you know farm um, to to grow food to to, you know, not to sell it, not to make money, but just to, you know, to, to have access to this type of food, I would be terrified. But that, you know, at that point of time, it was fine. Uh, so, so really, you know. Was, what are was some inter- of the stories at that time? Like, what is poverty, you know, for just if you were to paint the picture for people who can't fully, it's hard to comprehend, right, if you're not living it. What were some of the stories you tell your friends that they can't believe are true? <laughs> okay, that, that it it really will sound a little bit crazy, and, and you may think bad about my parents, but they they're awesome people, and I really really love them. And, and I, they, I don't know them, so I can't think bad about them. So. <laughs> but but the example is so so you know when you when you plant potatoes, you first need to plow, like you know to to make to make uh, ground ready for potatoes. Right. So to plow, usually, you know, use horses or, or some other, you know, draft animals. Um, and we didn't really have any horses or anything. So so we would just, uh, you know, pull the plow ourselves. And, and to pull the plow, you need one strong person to kind of push it down. And then some other people have to kind of drag pull it. it. So drag it. Yeah, so... So the strong people were usually like men, and then then who else kind of remains to kind of drag it? So kids were dragging it. So it sounds a little bit, you know. So you were the horse in this situation. I was the horse, yeah. So hey, listen, you do what you have <laughs> that's to why do. Now, yeah. yeah. So that, that's why now, like when when people say like you know I work hard, no, not really. That time I worked hard. Now it's just relaxing. Eugene, I always ask, since it's Inspired Insider, what has been one of the lowest moments for you um, and how you push through? And then on the flip side, what's been a proud moment in your your journey so far? What's been uh, a low moment you had to push through? Yeah. So so when you, when you say low, you mean like I w- it was just emotionally kind of yeah. devastating in a way ah yeah okay that's that's easy because yeah, um, we always talk about oh they raised they have four million users 40 million dollars it wasn't always like that for people right they came from something that was hard you know yeah i think i think low low probably like psychologically low, my lowest moment was um when i was in college uh i had to to work 
uh, because like my pa- my parents could not support me, you know, through through this. So I had to work, and um, um, you know, because I had to work, I didn't always have a lot enough enough time to study. And then um, when 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 I had exams, I really didn't have a lot of time to prepare. So so I had to kind of do this overnight. So almost no sleep, and um, and and one of the most important exams, I still failed it. It was actually a very tough exam, and I was probably not really good at this area <laughs> of science. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I just failed the exam, and and the whole situation was like, if I if I fail exam one more time, um, I, they, they would they would kick out, kick me out. Uh, out of college and also out of uh, dorm apartment. Uh, and I could not afford any other housing in that city, so I would have to kind of go back. Um, and I didn't sleep already for a long time, and then I couldn't couldn't have, you know, sleep till till the next exam because I needed to prepare. And like a lot of, you know, things at that point of my life was at stake. So, so that was probably psychologically like one of those moments where like I, I had like really bad thoughts about what, what I'm going to do if I fail with this exam. It sounds, yet again, like now when I look at this, that doesn't even seem to be a problem. Like that's just some, some, some kind of someone, a weenie teenager thinking about, you know, his problems. No, no, nothing really serious there. Uh, but yeah, back in the day, it felt like really life-changing thing, uh, you know, failing some exam. Um, I think, I think the, the, the highest, the highest moment was, uh, you know, when, when we, uh, kind of sold first portfolio company, uh, that was, I think, exceptional experience was really complicated deal. I was really involved with that, with that company. And, um, yeah, you know, when we finally did it, I didn't even have any emotions left, but it, it felt really, really good. From that point, I know I knew like, okay, if we sold this company, we are probably really good at selling companies, and and I can do this kind of because uh, it was so for a long time. That, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because yeah, exactly. Because the, the, there was no kind of um, kind of kind of you know no no consensus between investors and founders and what you know we want to do so it was complicated eventually like now we are all friends at that point it was tough so i was thinking okay if we came through all this and we sold the company we're really good at it so so that actually can be my profession because you know i was at that point associate in a first time vc firm so it's it's kind of either either you can do this or not even even you sometimes can have doubts like okay, maybe I'm just trying to do something I cannot do. Like I'm not, you know, made for this. And when once we did this deal, I was I, I knew like yeah, that's that's can be my profession till till the end of my life. I, I'm actually good at it. Um, but yeah, yet again, in the, in this case, we we work with great people. I mean, we we as I said, still great relationship with with founders. They're awesome guys, um, and uh, the partner. You know, my my partner at the firm, we still closest friends. So, you still believed though in the SEMR so much that you almost changed careers in a sense, right? Oh yeah, sure. And, and I mean, like knowing knowing the whole thing now, I the, the only regret I have, I haven't done this early because I knew Oli like, for a while before you know we actually had this conversation and I joined the firm, uh, the you know, SEM Rush. But I knew guys for, uh, you know, I, I think at least two years more, like before that. So I, I need to check specific date, but, but I knew them. And I, like my only regret, I haven't done this earlier. And, um, yeah, it's it's more like I, I, I probably regret more um, kind of not not recognizing is in this and staying more in VC versus going <laughs> earlier in, uh, in you know, to work in SM Rush. It was like such 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 uh, such an opportunity that that happens, you know, sometimes once once in a lifetime. Um, 
And as I said, as an investor, I've seen many businesses. I had a chance to be kind of part of the big stories, but um, there are very few companies like this. And and what's even more important, there are very few companies where uh, you really like to work with people that much. It's um, you know sometimes it's a great business. But it's, you know it's just business. You know you you come come to work, do your job, go home. Uh, there are no like uh, relationships, and I think SEM Raj, for me, uh, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, like family, and, and yet again, I think my only regret I didn't join earlier. Hmm. Uh, guys was definitely into something. It was you know writing the writing was all over the wall, and I just decided to stay in VC longer. And then you know we did we did great things uh, with with Target. Um, was was tremendous experience. People I've met and worked with, uh, yeah, you know, also have have very good relations with them. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that was you know, SEM Brush was very different opportunity. Yeah, and you know, Eugene, thank you, thank you, everyone. Check out SEMRush.com, Sellerly.com. I'm going to be the first one. Eugene, thank you so much, and uh, hopefully we'll hang out in Chicago. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good one. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.